Um, I, I don't think, by the way, that a lot of the ideology uh, helps with regard to these two questions. I'll get to immediately. Uh, particularly uh, Judith Butler, who I think many of us uh, greatly admire, uh, uh, essentially we're in agreement with that. Uh, she, she's put it in some kind of ideological, theoretical terms, but we're, we're certainly in agreement with that. What we need help with is two things. One is uh, to understand how Israeli society got to the point where it is now. It might be turning, we don't know, there's a great deal of confusion going on now. But how did we get from uh, 400,000 people uh, in uh, uh, Rabin uh, Square, at, at that time it was Kikar uh, HaMalachim in Tel Aviv, uh, to uh, how did we get from peace now to uh, the Jewish home, that is Abayat uh which, which is now becoming a very strong party. How, how did we get there? And I, I think that part of the complexity that has to be taken into account is that Israel had, of course, a great deal to do with that. But the Palestinians made mistakes also. Uh, that hasn't been mentioned at all. Uh, and uh, while uh, we have the greater part of the responsibility, we are supposed to be the responsible adults and we've acted irresponsibly. But the, there is something on the other side, particularly the advent of the Second Intifada, uh, that uh, that uh, sort of uh, shuffled all the cards and uh, created a tremendous change in Israeli society, which was at one time very sympathetic to all the things that we were talking about. Now they're very suspicious. So it is up to us to try to get from here to there, to try to turn this around. And the second question is, how do we do that? And uh, I think that one of the things that we have to do as Israelis is of course push as far as we can, as much as we can, as strong as we can for human rights uh, in the territories and in Israeli society for all groups. Uh, but we also have to strengthen those social and educational frameworks which, uh, uh, in the Jewish society, which would lead people to think differently about their society, to think differently about human rights, and to be more uh, and to be more sympathetic to the kinds of things that we're talking about. So one last uh, quote, I think that Please, all of the this, last, the uh, very sentence. last, I'm sorry, uh, the, uh, the, 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 there seems to be in the, uh, in the talks that were made, I think a fundamental simplification of what the Zionism means. There's a great deal in Zionism, in Zionism and there is a, a stream in Zionism which essentially declares and sympathizes and emphasizes all that we've been talking about. I'm talking about the, uh, the Zionism of Uber and Magnus and people like that who have not been heard from very much in Israeli society. That is, there is a great deal of potential in the Jewish part of Israeli society to turn things around. We have to figure out how to do it. Okay. Uh, somebody's waiting here. Uh, and, and we have several over here. Don't we feel pain? 
and that maybe can happen only in one state with really freedom of, of movement to everyone and the same rights to everyone. Um, just before Estelle speaks, I'd like to uh, remind us all that maybe, if, uh, Ahmed, if I'm allowed to use a phrase you used this morning, there are uh, inferior victims and superior victims, and uh, I'd like to invite our Palestinian guests here to be superior victims and to take also the place to speak. So, uh, but. The, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, w I wish to really thank for the organizers uh, for this um, amazing experience. It has been very stimulating for me. Uh, and uh, to sum up, um, I think a few comments from this part of the room. Uh, I think uh, a lot of us here agree on the goals, but I think uh, uh, what's really important uh, to psychotherapy and to nonviolent resistance uh, is uh, the technique. Uh, it's not enough to agree upon the goals and what would be desirable as an end result, but how do we get there? That is really crucial, we cannot bypass that. And uh, I, uh, just like we need to learn more about how to resist nonviolently in the, in the clinic, we need to learn more about how to resist nonviolently outside the clinic. Um, uh, that's, uh, and, and that pertains to uh, how Palestinians can better use international law to advance their cause and how Israelis and Jews can be better allies in that. That pertains to whether or not the Palestinian Authority is, is helpful and the growing uh, discourse among Palestinians that it's really unhelpful and aiding in the oppression of the, of the Palestinians. Uh, and there's also um, uh, uh, the question that the organizers here had to grapple with uh, as part of the organizational effort is the question of, of BDS, where um, uh, the BDS movement uh, asked uh, uh, to, uh, to move the conference outside the Tel Aviv University, and I really applaud the decision uh, that was made to, to, to uh, express solidarity with the BD Palestinian BDS uh, call and to move the conference. Um, uh, however, I am aware that there are many um, uh, uh, many uh, Israeli anti-occupation uh, activists who still somehow think that uh, that it is not okay for the Palestinians to be calling for BDS, and to me this is, uh, in my mind, this is very colonial because this is a popular, non-violent, uh, very widely embraced uh, Palestinian uh, call, and I think uh, it's it's a problem for Israeli for Israelis who are anti-occupation to ignore this call and then say. Uh, why are the Palestinians not doing anything? Why are they not walking out? Why are they not resisting? And why is the occupation not ending? I think we need to research, uh, as Israelis, we need to research the economy of the occupation uh, a lot more deeply. And we really need to, uh, to think uh, uh, how we can uh, 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 engage in effective economic activism against uh, the occupation. But first and foremost, we need to hear what the Palestinians are actually saying and asking us to do and recognize that this is the Palestinian movement and uh, we, we are allies uh, uh, who are called upon to support it. I want to ask if there's, what else does the psychoactive group do? Uh, does the psychoactive group <coughs> offer speakers to the educational environment? Uh, I felt 
an outsider in Philadelphia, and I left at the age of 18. I felt an outsider in Israel. I felt pretty good for 15 years in London, but my husband then, who really tried on his British passport to have Palestine as his state of birth, as a very active Israeli uh, revolutionary, I have now completed 30 years of working in the school system in Israel and doing a lot of work with educational psychologists and student advisors. There's a lot of work to be done in the school system about values. There's a lot of work to be done not only when the bereaved parents uh, come into the schools and not only when I meet a disgusting kind of competition, I call it Yibutacharut HaKipuach. Everybody wants something because they suffered more, okay? Um, there's no awareness among youth anymore that there's another person in a parallel highway road. It's all who they are. Maybe that's part of the new age. Um, I would like to know if there's a way of communicating with psychoactive to see if there are subgroups among us who would like and give permission to identify ourselves, who might be thinking about promoting this idea as in England, and it was after the abortion campaign, we had resolutions raised in trade unions, okay? We promoted ideas in other organizations. Um, when I finally, last week, went back to a demonstration of women in black, and I, I, I was incensed by the death of uh, Abu Ayn, in the, uh, I, when he was planting an olive tree. And I came with slogans such as, end the occupation because it kills us all. And another one, which was health warning, apathy is dangerous to our health. Um, I just wanted to thank people here. My name is Tamar Shonfield, and I am an Israeli living in London for the last 30 years. Um, I didn't know Yad and Sarah, but what came out for me this morning was something of a personality, more than, more than actually who he was. What came over is how he was, and what came over was a benign person, a benign adult, a benign father, a good enough father. And I was thinking that, what, that something of mourning his loss was in kind of losing a father. And then I thought that perhaps what's missing and what we perhaps all long for are leaders who could be good enough fathers. Because I think that, that from where I sit, we can't come and say, you have to do this or you have to do that, coming from outside. I think we are in a very peculiar and difficult position. And I don't think that us you Jews or in the diaspora, or Israelis in the diaspora, can tell what to do. But on the other hand, we can perhaps just bear witness to how difficult it is and to how this part of the world is going backwards. It's not the only part, I think I agree, that kind of nationalism is raising its head not only here. And, you know, fascist tendencies. I think England is a good 10, 20 years behind, but on the way. And so I think we need here, what we really need and long for, are responsible parents. Where they will come from, I'm not sure. Also a student of uh, drama therapy, actually psychodrama. I'm just in my first year, so I'll be very nervous. Um, but I would like to build upon some of the things that were said regarding the complexity and the loss of complexity. And my feeling was that some of this complexity was lost because the otherness in this discussion was largely divided across the line of nationality, like. We, the Israelis, have the Palestinians as our others, the Palestinians has us as our others, and I think there are much, many more divisions within this conflict, as, and as a future therapist, for me at least, 
I mean, to the extent that I'm going to work in the occupied territories, I would definitely take some of the things that were said here with me, but I would probably mostly work with other Israelis. And my other, that was kind of completely absent here, is the right-wing Israeli. And for me, what I took from this uh, conference, although I, it was not, uh, um, it wasn't said uh, in so many words, but for me, my ability to then to go uh, next Wednesday when I meet my fellow students, and some of them are settlers, and how am I able to look beyond the oppressor victim division that is there? in any encounter almost. It's not just me and as, as an Israeli, I'm the oppressor when I meet a, a Palestinian. I am also see myself or feel myself as a victim when I meet a settler because I have anger, I have rage, I, have, I feel that my country was taken from me, etc., etc., etc. And I think this encounter with this right-wing Israel and my ability to, to come to him and also recognize his pain without forgetting my moral uh, position is the main focus, and I would have liked to hear more about that. Uh, I think uh, we have to be more practical as a group. Uh, this is the way I see the overall issue of uh, nonviolent resistance and therapy. And and struggling against the occupation. Of course, the Israeli occupation has been resulted in so many other occupations in our lives as Palestinians that such a great initiative should be standardized in a way. Of course, I have some ideas to share with others on how to standardize the nonviolent resistance process to for a kind of community psychoeducational programs that could be carried out in both sides. I'm sure, as long as I keep saying that we are learning more from our clients and beneficiaries, more than from the theories that have been developed in this field, such a campaigns could be enriched by the people themselves, while Hearing today for all the presentation presented, I remember so many series of evidences uh, in relation to what has been said. One of them, for example, when the Oslo Agreement sign which was signed, the Palestinian children who was active in the first Intifada, they stopped immediately and they went out with the flowers to the Israeli soldiers. There, there had been some other components that should be considered in developing the non-resistant violence. Would it be hope? Is that the case? We have to think of it. Would it be that people were thinking together, especially children and others, that they have a plan for the future, in relation to the despair that has been presented today. I mean, all these theoretical, let's say, aspects should be standardized in a way and to be tested in reality and see how long we can, we've come up with uh, an active, uh, non-resistant war that is not only needed in between Palestinians and Israelis, I'm sure it would be needed over all the world, especially in our region, where violence is spreading so fast. The psychoactive group would be a pioneering team to develop such an approach that could be resulted in a crucial theory that could be taught later on in our universities. Thank you.
height and sits down here at the end. Um, first, I would like to mention or like to point on the fact that uh, this large group is uh, slowly uh, disappearing, <laughs> um, which is very, I think, uh, need to be, I don't know, somehow to think about or acknowledge. Um, the other thing it's about... The tyranny of time. The tyranny of time. I don't know if it's just the thing, if it's just time or people think or feel that it's uh, being here is a waste of time. Um, or they can do something better with their time. And um, for me, I feel that um, something in this space is uh, not allowing me to, to use what is discussed here in a more meaningful uh, way. I think about the, when uh, the other guy there talked about the absent, absence of uh, right-wing uh, Jewish Israelis. I'm sure that if we we'll, we'll have done this uh, uh, meeting event in Tel Aviv University, we would hear um, in a quiet and aggressive and probably aggressive and not very um, hot, easy to deal uh, manner, uh, the voice of uh, right wing Israelis. But in uh, some, I think, um, maybe unconscious way, we shut the mouth of. Uh, of Right, we Israelis and also of ourselves, because we can speak in this way. Um, ah, yes, in in a second. Um, yes. So. Uh, what touched me most with, uh, was the story about uh, Yad Saraj about the soldier in the car and how we actually transformed the soldiers, soldiers' soul, I think. And I was thinking all day about um, the issue of uh, transformation. And, um, what I take for myself personally is uh, your advice, Jessica, to look into my aggression and my violence, not the other, but myself. And uh, with my husband, with my children, with my neighbors, and with everyone. And I say it almost in tears because this is really something that. Um, it's very easy to see the others' aggression, but um, it's very delicate to watch how I am aggressive in almost every step that I take. And uh, the other thing is that yesterday I spoke about the spaces, looking for the spaces, and uh, I, I would like to find the space in memorial for Dr. Yadav Siraj to meet my fellow right-wing people and try to get into their heart. And since we have the election coming very soon, I think this is a crucial time for us to look for that and uh, to find a way to really touch each other's hearts. And since we are all here, I, for myself, carry very much for the state of Israel, uh, I would like to find a way to do that. I wanted to say um, that uh, for me it was a very uh, exciting day and in all kinds of ways but uh, maybe most um, meeting uh, people from Gaza I want to say thank you for coming
went through this summer. Um, and it's really wonderful that you're here and wanting to be together. Um, and, and I look at the face of Ms. Sarah and I think that I'm learning something from, from his face. Um, and we're learning something together. So. Um, and, and thank you for the organizers, because I know we have to battle the wall that everybody, the government, the army, is putting so that we don't meet and don't see each other. Um, and thank you also, I want to say to Jessica and Stephen and, and the others who came from abroad, because you're strengthening us and helping us think. And I know that I, I feel that it's hard, and I want to take a step back and not to think about it. Um, so this is very, very helpful. Um, and and, uh, and I, I also feel the complexities uh, of the discourse, but, uh, but more than everything, this is, this is what I feel about the day. So thank you. Uh, I want to speak to right now because I feel it's an important moment. Uh, and I want to say my thanks to the last two speakers because you're the first two people who have spoken in this open forum who have expressed what I think is appreciation for what Iyad gave us, and that's why we are here. And I want to say also that uh, I am trying to deal with the anger response I have at some of the ways that questions or objections were posed that do not start with that gratitude. Uh, and I'm grateful to Rahama for, as a person who was one of the speakers, for having reminded us why we're here, and Ahmed having reminded us why we're here, but I feel it's really important, uh, and I hope uh, that you take this, as we say in America, in the nicest possible way, that Israeli society could really do well to start with what you have to appreciate and what you are being given and taught by the other. Even when the other is not being so friendly to you, there is a uh, sutra in, that is used widely in Zen Buddhism, uh, which says that uh, basically human life is so precious and that life is so precious that it caused our ancestors to give attention to even the smallest sentient beings and to cherish them, but also to make us aware that others, even when they harm us or frustrate or thwart us or appear stupid to us, are actually our teachers. Mm -hmm. And this is a very hard attitude to cultivate, but I'm going to say that's my answer to the questions you are posing about what should we do. So I'm going to suggest, take the attitude that everything that frustrates you, for instance, the, what you see as the lack of complexity, which by the way I don't see, but take it as your teacher. What is it showing you about yourself? Hold up the mirror to yourself. Please try to do this not in a hateful way. When you look at your own aggression, which I also do on a daily basis, and think about what a schmuck I am all the time, do it, if possible, with humor. Do it with appreciation for the fact that we are all such flawed beings. Start with the basics. Start with the basics here. You know, Stephen said something really important about how all these people are blaming and yelling at each other. This goes on all the time here around the conflict, and certainly it's a huge issue for me when I have to uh, confront people who I would otherwise perhaps be close with, but who have what I feel are terrible attitudes uh, toward the situation here. When this comes up, I feel that um, the first thing I notice is the anger in my heart and the frustration and you know hateful feelings that I have, but uh, it seems to me that all of us 
really need to appreciate the way in which we can be helped to not blame when we remember some of the ways that Iyad responded. Uh, so he is our teacher, and he was a gift to us, let's say, and his teachings were a gift to us, because I can think about him if I remember to, and say to myself, oh, I really don't have to have that immediate reactivity. And the key to that, I think, is to speak now psychoanalytically for a moment. When we are unable to think, it's because we are not, we do not have affect regulation. We are dysregulated, right? We, the key to thinking isn't just theory. The key to thinking is to be able to calm down. And regulating affect is something I'm not that good at doing by myself, so I've spent a lot of time thinking about how other people can help me regulate my affect. Naturally, that involves my regulating their affect, but uh, it's that cooperative process I want us to think about. Think, think at the most micro level for a second about how we help each other regulate affect, and then think about translating that into our political behavior. And think about the way that we interact with each other and the kind of respect and love and gratitude we can give to each other as a way to carry ourselves forward in this very difficult position we're in and then go out into the world. Because if we're going out to the world feeling really frustrated with each other and not appreciated by each other and not regulated by each other, I mean, we're going to bring our dysregulation out there with us. So I really don't know what magical force Iyad was tapping into, that he had this ability to uh, be in a social situation of intense conflict where someone is trying to humiliate him and he has the capacity to try to regulate that person, to try to calm them down, to say something that speaks to their humanity. I don't know where he got that from. But let's just try to remember and practice with each other because we're less frightening to each other than some soldier who's trying to beat us. So, you know, we should be able to get a head start on it with somebody who's not actively threatening us. That's what I would uh, like to open up here as a, a possible way to start. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, I would like to be mutual teachers and reactivity to each other. I accept I offer you the same thing. Hello everyone, my name is Musallam. I am from Gaza. I study medicine. I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, what, I, what I would like to make, uh, to do is to share my thoughts in the peace process that is initiated between Israelis and Palestinians. The first moment, uh, the first time I have encountered a peace program between Israelis and Palestinians, I didn't feel very con convenient to be uh, thought of as a traitor uh, in the eyes of my people. Because in Gaza, you know, we had, I have witnessed three major wars and uh, the people of my uh, city is very, are very critical of the Israelis and they make them, they identify with them in the same category, which I managed to, to not do after I get involved in such programs initiated by the very popular uh, peace uh, uh, institution in Israel, which is called Yalla. Uh, I did manage to speak with uh, Israelis in, um, in Jordan like one month ago, and we did have some training workshops in negotiation and sharing our stories and narratives. And this is the first step I took, which I am very encouraged to, to move, uh, to, to advance. I'm not saying that this, I am very hopeful that our conflict will be resoluted in the 10 years ahead, but I think that what is important is that we have to believe is uh, we have to believe in the idea that we are moving in the right direction. And if we get more people involved in this, like everybody, uh, like if, uh, someone who had commented to 
gather people from the right wing and left wing, not in Israel, but in Palestine, I think this would be the greatest step that we can do to, uh, to move ahead and bring peace to the uh, most disgusting conflict in the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you. Salem, thank you very much because uh, one of the things that I wanted to say, my name is Yvonne Deutsch and I'm a co-organizer uh, of this conference. And um, there are many moments of uh, being very moved and very happy to have this gathering. And I also want to share with you uh, some of my uh, frustrations. Uh, and one of the, we have here more than 10, uh, at least 30, we had three Palestinian speakers. And uh, we have at least 13 guests, Palestinian guests from occupied territories. And as organizers, we didn't manage to create a space. They came from Gaza, they came from West Bank, and we didn't manage to create a space to listen to the voices. So we have to make some self-reflection. Their voices are part of the three speakers. We have to make self-reflection how easy for us as privileged, privileged Israelis, privileged Ashkenazi, privileged whites, how easy it is for us to take the space and have guests and not listen, not create the space to listen to their experience, to learn from their experience. So I want to say thank you that you came. I feel so happy to see you. And I want to apologize that we didn't create this space for you to, make, to give us this experience of listening to you. And if we are here in the heritage of Iyad, which we, many things were spoken, but one of the things that was mentioned also that he was a um, uh, chauvinist. So as a feminist, I'm always looking at power relationships. And it's not the end of the conference, but the way we were thanked in the morning reminded me that in a way we were neglected. Because it sounded like Uri Hadar and the girls. <laughs> and this is also an issue of space. So I want to say, and it's not the end of the conference, but I want to thank to Leora Soto, to Tali Ostrovsky, to Yael Talbar Zilai, to Efrat Evan Zoom, to Yael Sivan, to Bati Lovinstein, to Iris Dotan Katz, and to Rony Kaydam, who is doing the administration. And I was also part of the organizers, Yvonne Koch. We all have also family names. Palestinians get a hand and then, no, you're welcome. I want to say, share something with you. Um, um, with time, the passage of time, it became very clear that what is restless in me is the. Um, um, I'm trying to understand why I'm restless. Um, why I'm restless and why I'm not thinking very well. Um, I've lost my ability to think this day. Um, and. Actually, I, I, I lose um, my ability to think when there is a miss and disorder. And I think we are missing something here unconsciously. It is talking about leadership. And we uh, nominated Yas Saraj as a man of ideas. And I think uh, I was, you know, I'm following all the terminology of the content of this content day, of the learning day, that the word leader was not mentioned at all. Um, maybe once. 
but um, he was nominated as a man of ideas, as not as a, lead, as a leader. And I think what is paralyzed in the society right now is the ill and the pathological leadership. I think it is in the both sides of the society. And that's what made me very uh, restless. In a way, there's a lot of motivations, and we, as if we are going nowhere without leading on the issue. That's what I wanted to share. Hamas and left wings and uh, Islamic Jihad. 
But I think it's the same one in Israel since 1996 between uh, Shimon Peres, Rabin, Likud, uh, <laughs> something like that. Now we uh, repeat what you did in 1996, I think. Uh, but let me talk about another, another thing. We are now working on a peace project to raise this uh, peace voice from Gaza Strip. You know, it's maybe strange that somebody, there is a peace in Gaza, they are just with birds and machines and missiles and no one can joke, no, 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 no. Gaza are different. Gaza have a lot of things. There is uh, songs in Gaza, there is art, there is drugs, there is vodka, there is whiskey, there is cognac. There is a relationship between girls and boys. And also the Gazan, all the Gazan said, all, not all, 70% from the Gazan said, we hope that Israeli occupied come back to Gaza. In the taxi, in the market, in the street, in the house. Because we mean, use, uh, use Abu Abu Ammar uh, government, use Hamas government, and use the uh, no government now. <laughs> but in the last, I'm happy that I'm here. I'm happy that I'm still a human after seven years from how many wars? Uh, 2008, 2012, 2004 and uh, also uh, conflict between Fatah and Hamas and more than 1,500 killed by Palestinians by other in, uh, in Gaza, you know. Also we have many, many errors. We need to fix ourselves, as you, as you need to fix yourselves also. We are the same. Uh, you are from England and you have maybe uh, many nationalities. I, my mother is Algerian. I live in Kuwait. I study in Egypt, <laughs> now I'm in Israel. So we are the same, but we need to create another generation. So we can control maybe, or maybe uh, achieve our goals to make a peace agreement after 10 or 20 years. Because Abu Mazen and Netanyahu are just looking for Abu Mazen and Netanyahu. And we are uh, <laughs> nothing for them. Abu Mazen, uh, uh, just look for Abu Mazen. Abu Ammar was smart. Yes, Arafat was looking for Hamas and Islamic Jihad in the in the height and in the conference. No, I'm against violence. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, you must no you you must decide your decision. Are you with peace or are you with violence? In Gaza also there is another thing. We don't know what do you want exactly. A border with 67, a border with 48. Someday I'm asking my brother, what, what kind of border do you need? He said, I need a border 2009, but I want to live, I want to travel, I want to live. My last thing, I, uh, I applied for a presentation in an American house on 13 January. But I'm afraid that I will not get a permit. So I, I have no problems with there is no problems with IDF, no problems with government. But Netanyahu and IDF suffer all Gaza, all Gaza Hamas, all Gaza Fatih, all Gaza, no, 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 no. Not all Gaza what happened in the, in, in the Laksi TV or in Palestine TV, no. All the Palestinians now looking for independence, not looking for parties. All our parties look for their interests. As Likud and Amal and your Lieberman and uh, Shaz and, and, and looking for their parties. So please, let us raise our voices to achieve maybe a peace agreement uh, in uh, 10 days, uh, 10 years, uh, 20 years. So you kind of children, you, you know, <laughs> our future is terrified. Now our children and yet, what's the name? Musab, Abu Mu'ad, Abu... Jahil, Hamza, there is no Ahmed, no Rami, no Sami, no Ra'id, that's normal game. So our president will be after 30 years, Mus'ab, Abu Mu'az, Abu Anas, with bears, and uh, it's terrified. So let's cooperate with each other, let's achieve a peace agreement. We can do it. Netanyahu and Abu Mazen, not looking for you. 
I'm typing this and I'm uh, on my Facebook page. I'm, uh, I'm talking seriously. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Yvonne. And you're I'm happy again. to be here. Yeah. My name is Rami Amani from Gaza. I came with uh, Sajida. She's uh, first time to be in Gaza. Um, Salam. Uh, what is my sister, Christina? <laughs> My sister also ran a account with Christina and thank you again and you will come any time to come Gaza if IDF uh, give you any permits. Thank you. Nina, I wonder if you have a piece of your missing puzzle now. Maybe you must rest this or not. We have five more minutes, so we're ending soon this session and conference. I, I think people are going to have a drink somewhere here, though, you know? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I once again want to begin with thanks and apologies. With thanks because it has all been a wonderful experience for me. And it was particularly lucky last night that I could hear all of the Palestinians um, who came from Nablus and Hebron. And I kept wanting to intervene to say, us the folk from Nablus, ask the folk from Hebron to speak because they're going to have to go back behind those walls soon and heaven knows when you'll hear their voice again. So we're hearing the voice of people the other side of the siege from Gaza, but we didn't from other walls. So I was a little sorry about that, but you know, it is wonderful to listen to all of you and to listen to the left and peacemaking Israeli Jewish voice. But I do also, unfortunately, want to get back to politics all the time and, and even with what was important about Yad al Sarraj was he was a, an important community leader. He could have the role that he had. He could show the dignity and be effective as a community leader because to be a Sarraj is something to be. He had has relatives in Hamas, he has relatives in um, the PA and you know it's not easy for other Palestinians to speak to a soldier and have them listen. The soldier will just boot them or arrest them. You know, they won't be listened to. And so I do think I worry about us being a bit too naive about the politics of power and the difficulties for community leaders like Iyad, but there's community leaders you know, throughout all the Palestinian territories and they're just being jailed over and over again, we never get to hear their voice in the West, you know, we don't, we just don't hear that there is non-violent Palestinian resistance, and, um, and it's absolutely crucial that we build coalitions and support and so on, but there is a huge problem of how we also get representative leadership in Israel, in the West Bank, in Gaza, hopefully some unity soon between them, so we're not talking about three countries, and, and think about how to get any beginnings of cooperation between the movement politics like yours, between the coalitions and those who are going to be in government. That does have to be addressed, and it doesn't just come from the interpersonal. You know, there's a lot of politics around movement theories, how movements can um, be actually effective in political situations, which, you know, maybe you think it's not your job to have to work, think about that. But I, you know, what I try to say as a, as a voice from the diaspora is, we're certainly thinking about it. We're certainly worrying. Why can't the, why, what can we do rather? What can I do, you know, to help support the Israeli left, to help supporting the peacemaking Israelis, Jewish and Palestinian, whether inside Israel or outside Israel. And by the way, we are having a conference, Independent Jewish Voices is having a conference the 16th and 17th of um, March, in which Avram Berg and various Palestinians, some of whom I've met here, and others will be coming over to discuss human rights, how to work now on human rights, as so many of you I know do, as so many do, but how to be more effective and how for us to be more effective from the outside in putting more pressure on those who will be in power here in your government, even if Labour gets in, we know that this is not going to be an immediate answer to a lot. How to put pressure 
you know, all around this territory to change the political situation. And that's these are questions of power. They're not just questions of recognition because most people, most people without power are never going to be recognized by the oppressor. They're just not. I'm sorry I'm, that there are others who wish to speak, but we have to wrap up the afternoon, and I think there are some getting together and meeting, and we'll be able to go on speaking. I know that we're talking about all of our lives, and uh, in a way we held during this day the most important things in our lives, which is how can we live without being victims and without being oppressors. And at the same time, we did nothing today because we're all going back to our lives. So, But I think we can just all hold on to um, five years ago, there was a conference in Tel Aviv University. The BDS wasn't that uh, full-blown. And uh, Ahmed spoke through my phone to the audience. I, uh, many people, not many, but uh, I'm sure, whoever was there, it was electrifying. And uh, and you're here, so we can all, we can have all kinds of uh, engagements. And till the next time, thank you, everybody. <laughs>